the Hobby Boss ME262. How does it go together? Find out right here on Gary's Stuff. Hi there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Today, indeed, I'm building the Hobby Boss 148th scale Messerschmitt ME 262A2A. Now, if you enjoy the show, and I hope you do, please remember, give it the imperial thumbs up on the like button below. And if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe to the channel, hit the bell and you'll be notified of all my future videos as they are released. And of course, if you want to offer a bit more concrete support, you can do that through Super Thanks. You can do it by becoming a channel member or you can do that through any of my online partner programs. Now, this kit, I should point out, was donated by a friend of the channel, Harry Grant. Harry, thank you very much indeed, my friend. If you'd like to see what you get inside the box, then there's a box opening video already available. It comes with a little bit of history of the aircraft as well and what other ME262 kits are available in this scale. If you want to see how to put it together, hang around right here and I'll show you. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is put these seat supports into the rear uh, panel here where the seat sits. I'm going to put these in and then put the seat in afterwards. And when the seat supports are in, the seat itself can go and you can see there's a, a small uh, knob at the end, the bottom there that sits on each side and grips that bottom corner of the seat. There we go. Then the seat can just rotate backwards into place. Right, so into the bottom of the tub goes the rudder bar that's going to have some pedals on it in a moment but we'll put the rudder bar in first then there's another piece that goes here There we go, just sits in there, that's fine. On each rudder pedal you can see there's a, like a little step at the top. That's supposed to sit on the top of the rudder pedal here, but that's going to take a little bit of uh, work, so I'll do that off camera. Okay, so that's, that's where they sit. Uh, it is very fiddly to get these on, trust me. They do go on, but it's fiddly and not a lot of fun. But they will go in place. Just for something I'm never going to see. I spent a lot of time trying to get that right. But hey ho, that's model making for you. The next thing in is the control column. It sits in like so. Then the side panels can go in. This one's got a looks like a fuse panel or something, maybe like that already. This, this small panel goes in first. Then this panel goes onto this one, and then this one sits into the side of the cockpit like so. You know, the, the fact that the uh, throttles you know, moulded there is really nice. Let's make sure they sit down properly. We're going to leave this to dry and we'll paint it in a moment. The instrument panel goes into this upper combing like so and then we'll glue that in. There is a, there's a piece that goes on here, uh, a clear piece which holds the gun sight but I'll have a look into that in, in, in a while and see whether we need to put that in yet. Um, if not then this and the other two pieces will get sprayed for their colour first. 
So with the instrument panel, what I've done is I've done some dry brushing to get all these bezels and the edges. And I'm just going around, just spotting in bits of colour here and there. And I'm using the decal sheet as reference points for where some of these blobs of red and yellow are. Right, when everything's all dried, the instrument panel's dried and the base is all done, we can just pop the upper combing, if you like, into the fuselage tub. Like this. Just make sure all of the, all the pins line up. There we go. And then just run some glue around that and get it in place. And then we can slide the seat assembly into the back of the cockpit. You can see here it clicks in underneath the combing. The combing piece sticks out slightly. So this sits either side of it and just glue into the place. Then we can place the cockpit module onto this rear bulkhead piece. Like so. Then fits the front bulkhead piece on as well. See how it, it there's a tab here for it to meet up with as well as these two tabs here at the front. And that's the cockpit assembly done. As I said earlier, I'm going to leave the um, gun sight bit till later on. Okay, next we're going to start in the weapons bay for the nose. So this is the rear bulkhead of the weapons bay and the base of the weapons bay here. And the one goes into the other, like so. Just make sure they're nicely pushed together and then run some extra thin on the back of the seam. Now there are four 30mm cannon on this aircraft and each one comes with the bridge block in two halves and the barrels on one of the halves. So just glue these together then give them a bit of a tidy up. The cannon on the lower side of the nose each have these two um, feed and presumably ejector lines on them. One on each side of the breech. So what you have to do for each of these lower guns is fit the feed or exit chute, depending on what they are. I can't remember. I presume they're feed chutes. And then the shell casing dump. They have to go into these holes at the front. Then when they're in there, the back of the breech sits into a hole here. And that's your gun set and just glue it in place. Then when those are in place, there's just this breech cover plate and it goes in on the top of each gun. The upper guns each only have one feed, um, obviously the starboard side gun the feed comes out of the right, port side gun the feed comes out of the left, the feed comes out of the left, not feed, feed. Then the gun feed or ejector, whatever it is, goes in the bottom here. goes into the base and the gun sits on a mounting in here like so and there we go
like so. And then just tidy up all these bits and pieces around here. So some of them will move. Then the very, very front of the aircraft, there's a piece that sits here. Just give that a dab of glue to help it set. Then that sits onto this front piece like so. And again, we'll use super glue to bind it in place. I'm going to start putting together the, what I assume is the radio rack. There we go. For the aircraft. This piece goes on the back of the rack and then we've got, I guess it's cooling and fans and whatever. And then on the front we've got the space for a few uh, black boxes to go on. So we'll just put those on next. Each one just sits in place. The holes are actually sort of quite well engineered. The, on this one, for example, the holes are different sizes so you can't get it the wrong way around, which is very clever. Fortunately, all these parts are really actually well, well um, labelled. Just work your way around the board. When the rack is completed, it can go into place in the fuselage, like so. And when it's dry, we'll just uh, do a bit of dry brushing on here just to bring out the details in the radio sets. There's another radio box that goes in here. In, in hindsight, I would have done this one first. But anyway, there's a couple of small um, kind of supports that go into the side here. I think it's easier to put these in first rather than put them onto the radio and then try and put them into the fuselage. So they kind of sit like that. Then the radio box goes into the fuselage and then sort of sits on those two supports that you've put there. Uh, it's really are very, very small and very fiddly. So that's the radio rack in and I've given it a dry brush of white. I think it comes up really nicely. You can even pick out these fins on the side of this unit here, which is really nice. Whether I'll be able to see them again is, of course, a bit of a moot point, but no, we'll worry about that another time. On the side here, I've put on this uh, fire extinguisher that comes here. I'm going to just finish off this um, metalwork here in brass. This, I don't know what this is, um, some sort of container, water or gas or something or other. I actually don't know. I don't know the inside of the ME262 that well. So I'm going to paint this aluminium but keep these ribs as interior grey so it looks like they're sort of strapped to the side, a bit like the I've done here for the fire extinguisher. Then there's a couple more bits to go in at the back um, down here, uh, gas bottles, and then I'll give the whole lot a panel wash. Do the same for the other side, fill in the few bits that it needs, and then we're ready to assemble the aircraft. So now we can put the cockpit section into the aircraft. Like so. And we can put the gun section into the nose as well. Now with these in place, we can close up the whole fuselage put these little bits where they belong and everything's fine. So it's all taped up, actually the fit is really nice, especially the back 
part of the food size here that fits lovely. Um, yeah, it's all looking very, very good. Very impressed. While the fuselage is setting, I'll make the engines, the engine pods on either side, have the exhaust bodies here. They come in two halves. Okay, so you can put the centre body of the exhaust here. Now we will be putting this over the top as well. So what I'm going to do first is paint the interior of all of this and the interior of the exhaust pipe here in burnt iron. And then when I assemble it, I don't have to try and get the, the brush all the way down into the um, exhaust pipe to make it look right. And when the paint's dried and you're happy, then you can put the next piece of the nozzle on and just set that with a bit of extra thin cement. Right, so to produce the engine nacelle, we take the fore body and the uh, compressor fan and put that into the inlet. There is a little notch for alignment as well. Where is it? There it is. A little notch for alignment, like so. And then at the front end here, the uh, inlet goes on and again there's a little tab to locate the centre so it all sits nice and flat. At the rear end we put in the uh, exhaust body here. Then you get the other half of the nacelle. And so locate that body as well. So those go together, that goes together. These, this needs to just go in like that. There we go, in there. That's that. And there we go, that's the engine they sell. Assembled, and just glue it up, tape it up, glue it up, job's done. And do the same for the other side, of course. I forgot, briefly forgot that the uh, last thing to do, of course, is to put on the rear, ex the uh, exhaust at the rear. There we go. Like that. Looks very nice, actually. Very good job. So the first thing we're going to do, this is part of the um, undercarriage bay. This is the central part of the undercarriage bay. We need to put these little bits in here first. Hands are a bit cold today, so not very flexible. There we go, something like that. There we go. We're going like that, and then this piece here goes in like so, and then we glue the whole lot together. And that assembly can sit in the lower wing half, like so. Then we can put the upper half of the wings onto the lower half. Line them up, tape them up, and of course, as usual, extra thin cement all round. There's this central, central sort of structural piece goes in here this is what the um, cover doors for the guns fits against and the nose covering can go on as well well rats it might as well put in the rudder as well can fit the nose cone on as well there's this piece fillet piece here that goes in behind the cockpit as well Make sure that goes in. This, this is going to be covered with the rear canopy. And then there's this T bar thing that goes in. A couple of holes at either end, and it rests against the end. And I'll just use a little bit of uh, extra thin to bond those on. 
Then we can slot the engines in on each side of the wing. And you can hear that click. This properly clicks into place. A lot of these fits here have been a proper click into place. You know, the engineering is really nice. And just put the other engine on as well. Next, the fuselage just sort of clips over these little bits on the side and the wing sits in. What an amazingly good fit. In the uh, windshield there's this extra piece of transparency goes in. There's a little spot there to help align it. This is kind of like a, um, a thickening, armour plate thickening for the glass, just a tiniest bit of uh, extra thin will keep that in place. Don't worry about it spreading underneath it because that part immediately above where the joint is is going to be painted anyway. You can see I've already masked off the bits that are going to be clear. And I've already masked the, uh, the rear window and the canopy. Um, I've, what I've done with these, I've just edged them with tape and then I've put a masking solution over the middle. And the windshield fits into the frame here and um, we'll just glue that in and let it dry. So that's the paint job done. Um I found that these these parts were sort of intruding a bit too much here, so I've just resprayed this bottom pale blue a little bit on there and um, varnished everything, so it's all ready for decals now. Right, <clears throat> on each undercarriage leg or main undercarriage leg, we have to add these knuckles. These um, yeah things that go on and just go sort of span the um, damper element of the suspension. Why these are not a single piece, I don't know. You know how they say Christmas is a time for miracles? Well, so is spring because I actually found this tiny little piece of grey plastic on the floor. Okay, I don't have um, a carpet, but you know, that peep pinged out these old tweezers quite a way, and I did manage to find them. Anyway, so the two halves, there's one, one part that goes between these. Um, posts here that's plain there and there's the other part which has got a notch in because it, it sits on this little peg here and then they kind of meet up together in the middle so do that for the other leg as well the bombs each come in two halves like so and we just a bit of uh, extra thin to secure them with the bombs, you'll notice there's these uh, struts that go between the fins at the back, and you'll notice, you should better see, I hope there, that they're actually beveled, which, considering these are not even a centimetre, which these, these are what, about 0.7 of a centimetre long, the fact they've gone to this beveling on something less than a millimetre thick, I think is amazing modelling, amazing mould technology as well. So, just put them in, make sure they're all lined up all the way around. With all the camouflage work done at the tail here, I'm happy now to put the horizontal stabilizers or tail planes into the aircraft. That would have been a tricky bit of spraying if the tail had been there whilst I was doing it. Right, first thing to do is to put the undercarriage leg in. 
There's a square peg it fits into. And there we go. Like so. Then there's a the actuator leg strut sits on here. That sits into a hole on the inside wall. See the, the strut fits in a hole down there and it fits onto the nose wheel egg here and that's going to be nice and stable. The front gear door sits down into this gap and there's a small peg it locates against there. It locates against the base of the gear leg and then against a peg up here. I can just a, a spot of uh, glue to settle that in. On the undercarriage there's a door that sits here on a peg, like so. Then there's another door, sits on a peg and a slot here, and then tucks up against the other door, like so. The gear leg goes into the side of the aircraft. It's got a nice, positive, clunky sort of fit. Let's just tidy this up. And the carriage strut goes into a hole in the bottom of the compartment here. Then, if we can twist that round, it lines up with a pin on the undercarriage leg there. It's a, it sits into a, a hole down. It sits into a hole down here in the undercarriage bay, in this wall, and connects to a pin on the front of the leg there. And just All these bits are going to be touched up with the right colours later. The inner part of the wheel bay, these two inside doors fit on these two posts here. While we've got the plane upside down, we might as well put the rocket bottles on, take off, rocket assisted take off bottles. And of course the bombs can go on as well. They can put the doors back in their place with the struts provided to hold them open. And add things like the direction finding aerial and the piso tube. And at the back here I've got the access door so you can see inside you can't see very clearly because of the lighting here but you can see into the radio bay the equipment bay and there's just a little bit of stretched sprue there holding it open all i need to do now is put the canopy on and the kit's done so there it is the hobby boss me262 i thoroughly enjoyed making this kit it went together extremely well um, I can't really think of many things to say that's wrong about it. Um, the fuselage went together well. There's decent quality interior. Um, yeah, I mean, everything I liked. I have to say, everything I liked. It's a really nice kit. Seems fairly accurate. And um, a pleasure to build, frankly. So, really happy I've done it. Um, if you're thinking of a 148th, ME262 then I would say this is a good one to build. There it is then, ME262 from Hobby Boss, a lovely, lovely kit. If you've enjoyed the show, please do remember, Imperial thumbs up on the like button below, every like helps. And if you haven't done so yet, please do, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell, and you'll be notified of all my future videos as they are released. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time, goodbye.